Good morning, brothers and sisters. Church of the Living God, the ground and pillar of the truth. Hi. Well, this video today, Lord willing, this video is a collaborated effort. Praise the Lord. Praise our Lord Jesus Christ. Came to my attention too that um, at one time I had a video on the channel here done by a brother touching on this very thing. But upon uh, this brother's request, I asked of him, uh, you know, because he gave me permission to upload the video that he had done onto the channel and I asked him the one day, it's like, do you want me to keep that uh, video, the video you did on the channel? And he's like, no, well, you know, take it down. I asked him of it. So his video, he gave me the permission and he's like, get rid of it, would you please? I'm like, okay, so I did. So this video is gonna to be touching on that, uh, what that video once was on, so. Very quickly though, um, you will need your authorized version of the scriptures. Um, suffering for the sake of others. This morning, you know, when um, in study of the scriptures this morning and, you know, getting all cleaned up in the shower and whatnot. For some reason, I was brought to think about the Titanic. The Titanic. You remember, you've, you all know about the Titanic, right? The ship of death that was, I believe, intentionally sunk by the Jesuit order to get rid of those who opposed the, um, the Federal Reserve banking system, that kind of thing, which is touched on in a, in a documentary about the Jesuit order that I have on the channel here. Well... The Titanic went out to sea, and um, of course, we all know the story of it, that the, uh, ice, that the Titanic hit an iceberg, I believe intentionally. And while the Titanic was in sinking, the, the bow of the Titanic was sinking lower and lower into the water. The men in the rear part of the Titanic, because remember, the Titanic was a steam ship, basically, steam. They were feeding coals to these huge engines that were in the Titanic. The men continued shoving coal into these engines to keep um, electricity on and all that kind of stuff. They worked well into where the ship was sinking. They kept going for the benefit of others. Um, also, keep in mind the musicians of the first class, of course. But while the ship was sinking as well, the musicians played to kind of assuage the inevitable grief and um, catastrophe that was going to be, uh, befall upon so many. That the musicians kept playing, like I said, to assuage people. Similar to, like I said, the guys shoveling coal into the big boilers or whatever to keep electricity and power going in the Titanic for as long as they could. And of course, there are so many things about the Titanic that sh clearly show that it was sunk intentionally by the Jesuit order. But nevertheless, these men, these musicians and stuff like that, they kept going until... They could go no more. And eventually, of course, the Titanic, the bow, uh, the front part of the ship sank under the water. And then the, the uh, rear end of the Titanic was lifted up because it was full of air. And then it snapped in half. And that's pretty much when everything was uh, done with, pretty much. You might be saying, well, what's the point, Brad? They gave their lives for the ease of others. We don't know uh, when it comes to the Titanic who in those last moments truly came to be saved of the Lord Jesus Christ. We don't know. We don't know. But they suffered for others. Get 
It's your authorized version of the scriptures. As I said, this is a collaborated effort. A collaborated effort, this video is. But uh, turn in your authorized version of the scriptures. We're going to begin. This, this, what we're beginning with, is not in the notes here that I have. We're going to begin in Ephesians chapter 5. We're going to be looking at Ephesians chapter 5, verses 22 on to verse 33. Now, the context in which we are looking at is clearly about the wives, marriage, okay? But I would like us to, to look at this and ponder some things about what we are going to look at in Ephesians chapter 5 before we continue on in the, to the um, meat of this video. Okay? So please, go with me in the scriptures. Ephesians chapter 5. We will be reading to begin verses 22 on to verse 33. To close out the chapter. Again, context is clearly about marriage. Obviously. But let's, let's, let's go with this. Come on. Come on. Don't look at me. Look in the scriptures. Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands as unto the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, and he is the Savior of the body. Therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, his body, the church of the living God, the ground and pillar of the truth, okay? So let the wives be to their own husbands in some things. Whoops, excuse me. It says in everything. Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it. Now stop. Your sins, of course mine, but your sins put Jesus Christ on the cross. Okay? It was my fault that the Lord Jesus Christ died on that cross. It's your fault that he died on that cross. But God so loved, past tense, that he gave his only begotten son. Okay, that's John 3, 16. Obviously. Okay? He loved and gave, all past tense. But he gave himself for the church. For anyone who would come to him on his terms, brokenness and contrition. But see, that giving of himself. Verse 26, that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word. By the washing of water, by the word. You know, the sincere milk of the word. And that's a lowercase w, not a capital uh, W. Referring on to the written word. That he might present it to himself, a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be wholly separate, and without blemish. So ought men to love their wives as their own bodies. He that loveth his wife loveth himself. See, God the Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, but we all know this, uh, those of us who are of the church of the living God, God the Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, and the Lord is that spirit, 
dwells within us. We are part of him. He is in us. We are his bones and his flesh. We are the body of Christ. Okay? We are his ambassadors. Okay? Okay? Hence, that example is being given onto marriage between a man and a wife. But it is also thus with Christ and his church. The church of the living God. See? Self-sacrifice. Aha! Self-sacrifice. Verse 29. For no man ever yet hated his own flesh, but nourisheth and cherisheth it, even as the Lord the church. For we are members of his body, of his flesh, and of his bones. For this cause shall a man leave his father and mother, and shall be joined unto his wife, and they too shall be one flesh. Verse 31. He calls us out of the world, that we may be holy, separate than that which is out there. And he takes care of his own. The church of the living God. The body of Christ. Okay. And then he ties it all up right here in verses 32 and verses 33. This is a great mystery. But, continuing the thought in the sentence, I speak concerning Christ and the church. Nevertheless, let every one of you in particular so love his wife even as himself, and the wife see that she reverence her husband. Self-sacrifice for someone else. Charity. Not just mere love. Because you can love all the wrong things. And as uh, Ammon and Tamar you know, the son, the one son of David and the sister of Absalom, Tamar. He lusted after Tamar, but he thought it was love. And after he had fulfilled his sinful desire upon his sister, half sister, yes, but his sister. Yeah, he hated her. Right. Charity, self-sacrifice. Suffering for the sake of others. Go to Leviticus chapter 19. Leviticus chapter 19 in the authorized version of the scriptures. Leviticus chapter 19. We will be reading verses 11 on to verse 18 in Leviticus chapter 19. Okay? Leviticus chapter 19 verses 11 on to verse 18. Remember now, this is under the law. This is in a different dispensation. This is a dispensation where eternal security was not there. People were not eternally secure. They were not sealed as we are today, meaning they could lose their salvation. Animal sacrifices had to be given for the blood of the animals to cover sins. Well, the blood of God, the blood of God, the blood of God, our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, made a perfect atonement for sin. Okay? We have to remember that. If you haven't figured it out already, this, this is for our instruction and in righteousness. Okay? We need a lot of that. Going forward, we need a lot of it. Okay? If you're not saved... Going to put a link in this video for a video talking to you about salvation. Okay? Let's continue. Ye shall not steal, neither deal falsely, neither lie one to another. And ye shall not swear by my name falsely, neither shalt thou profane the name of thy God, I am the Lord. 
Oh, like taking his name in vain by using it as a curse word? Which is counted as nothing nowadays out there, isn't it? Especially even among little kids, children. And the parents, oh, it's so cute. I don't care where I'm at. I don't care whose house I'm in. If I hear the name of my Lord blaspheme, you know, taken in vain, I speak up and I, it's like, I'll speak up. It's like, hey, don't worry. I know where the door is. I'll let myself out. My wife and I will leave and we won't let the door hit us in the buttocks on the way out. Thank you. Bye. Okay. You hear it out there? Do you speak up? When you hear someone use our uh, Lord's name in vain, as a curse word, as an exclamation of profanity, do you speak up? Thou shalt not defraud thy neighbor, neither rob him. The wages of him that is hired shall not abide with thee all night until the morning. Thou shalt not curse the deaf, because they can't hear, nor put a stumbling block before the blind, but shalt fear thy God, I am the Lord. Think about verse 14 very, very uh, quickly. Those who are not of the church of the living God, those who are lost, and you have the fake people who call themselves Christians, Jesuit coadjutors, giving them a gospel that is not true. What are they? They are effectually doing cursing the deaf, and they are putting a stumbling block before the blind. That is what they are doing. Verse 15, ye shall do no unrighteousness in judgment. Thou shalt not respect the person of the poor, nor honor the person of the mighty. But in righteousness shalt thou judge thy neighbor. You know the statue of justice that some of you might be um, aware of? It's of a woman with a blindfold and scales and a sword, right? Justice is blind. Blind justice. <laughs> and how are we to judge? Right here, brethren. Verse 16. Thou shalt not go up and down as a talebearer among thy people. Gossip. That kind of Neither shalt thou stand against the blood of thy neighbor. I am the Lord. And who is your neighbor? People across the way, people up there, people next to you. Verse 17. Thou shalt not hate thy brother. Who is your brother? Who is your sister? Those who do the will of God, right? And who does the will of God? Those who are saved, born again, converted of the church of the living God, the ground and pillar of the truth. Someone who is my brother is someone who is saved, born again, and converted. Not someone who merely claims to be. Ah. <clears throat> Thou shalt not hate thy brother in thy heart, in thine heart. Thou shalt in any wise rebuke thy neighbor. Okay, now notice there, it says brother, and then it goes to neighbor. Okay? Making distinction. You might not agree with your brother in Christ. You might not like, even like him. But you can't hate your brother, who is also of the church of the living God. There ain't one of my brethren sisters out there that I have any how can I because you of the church of the living God if you hate your brother who is actually your brother saved born again converted of the church of the living God if you're doing that you hate Christ because what what did we look at already in Ephesians chapter 5 right 
You might not like him or her. You might have disagreements, yes. But it's dangerous if you harbor something here. And that's just going to mess you all up. <clears throat> Thou shalt in any wise rebuke thy neighbor, those who live by you securely, and not suffer sin upon him. Verse 18. Thou shalt not avenge. And how many of us have failed at that? nor bear any grudge against the children of thy people. Thy people. In contrast here, or in context, talking about the Jews. Remember the dispensational difference. But thy people, the church of the living God, for our instruction in righteousness. But thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. I am the Lord says the children of thy people, and then comma, but thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Do unto others as you would have them to do unto you, that kind of thing. Now go to Matthew chapter 22. Matthew chapter 22, still within the Old Testament, still doctrinally under the law. Matthew chapter 22, verses 36 on to verse 40. Matthew chapter 22, verses 36 on to verse 40. Okay? Matthew chapter 22, verses 36 on to verse 40. Master, these guys talking to our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, which is the great commandment in the law? Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart. And with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. The Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, is to be unto us of his body, everything. Remember, we are likened as the bride of Christ. He is our husband. We are to submit ourselves unto him. In everything. This is the first and greatest commandment. And the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. And what, look at what he says here. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets hang, hanging on it. Unless you truly love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind, it starts with the heart, see. Not here, it starts here. If you truly love the Lord, you will serve him and he will be all on to you. And how can you love the Lord unless you realize what he has saved you from and what you are, in fact, truly a sinner? No good. Go, to, uh, go back now to the uh, Old Testament, to Exodus chapter 20. I want us to look at this. Go ahead. Exodus chapter 20. Exodus chapter 20. The Ten Commandments, we're not going to be reading them all. We're just going to be reading on to verse 6. Now remember what our Lord Jesus Christ said. We are to love the Lord our God with all our heart, with all our soul, with all our mind. And to love thy neighbor as thyself. All the law and the prophets hang, hang upon that. Exodus chapter 20, verses 1 on to verse 6. And God spake all these words, saying, I am the Lord thy God, 
which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Now, very quickly, again, let's refresh our memories. This is the Old Testament, right? You cannot keep the Ten Commandments perfectly. If you break one of them, you break them all. These are God's perfect requirements. And they were given us to show us that we can't keep them, that we need a Savior. And that he brought us out of Egypt? Now, literally speaking unto the Jews, yes, dispensationally. But as I have told you many times, for our instruction in righteousness, Egypt is likened as to a type of the world. Okay? And he has brought us out of bondage from under the headship of Pharaoh, Satan. Okay? Let's continue. Verse 3. Thou shalt have no other little g gods before me. Think about it this. If something gets in the way of you and your relationship with the Lord, it's an idol. It's a little g god. Now, whatever that is, only you know. But think about it like this. It could be your very own self, couldn't it? Not just the little Marian statue or the, you know, the Buddha or whatever. No. Covetousness is likened unto idolatry within the Old Testament. And lust, covetousness, that kind of thing. Yeah. You shall be as God, knowing good and evil. Let's continue. And here's what the Catholics remove because they have their graven images and they take the 10th commandment and make it into two. <laughs> so coveting is now made two commandments. <laughs> yeah. But this is the one that they remove. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath, or that is uh, that, or that is in the water under the earth. Worship the sun, the moon, in the earth. Oh, worshiping the creature more than the creator. Or that is in the water under the earth. Fish, you know the. Jesus fish. Leviathan. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them nor serve them. For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God. There are many out there who have a problem with that. He made you because he wanted to, okay? For his pleasure, you were created because he wanted to. And he has every right to be indignant against his creation who will not give him due reverence. At the least, see. Visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me and shewing mercy unto thousands of them that love me, love me, and keep my commandments. Now, go to Romans chapter 13. Romans chapter 13. Romans chapter 13. Romans chapter 13, verses 8 on to verse 10. Romans 13, verses 8 on to verse 10. Pause the video if you need to. Owe no man anything but to love one another. In context, who is he talking about? The Church of the Living God, the body of Christ, okay? For he that loveth another hath fulfilled the law. And also, too, how do you love, show love 
on to the lost. We're going to be getting into that. Okay, I've covered this before, but we really need to remember this now. We really need to remember these things. Because what's coming. For this, okay, now here are our commandments for today. In this dispensation, the time of the Gentiles. For this, thou shalt not commit adultery. Go aside with someone else, you know. Remember what we read in Ephesians? Serving, uh, looking to some other little G God, perhaps yourself, or whatever it is you put above the Lord. Thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not bear false witness. Thou shalt not covet. And if there be any other commandment, it is briefly comprehended in this saying. Namely, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Love worketh no ill to his neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfilling of the law. Love is the fulfilling of the law. And Satan will be allowed to tempt you. To try you. To refine you. He will do things like, for example, let me raise up enemies to the brethren so that they fight back, so that they lower themselves to show just how fleshly they actually are. They call, hey, they, they call upon you. Let me tempt them a little bit. Let me let me let me have some adversaries, huh? Let me, you know, haven't you built a hedge about him, right? Right? Take with these things away, and he'll curse you. That's from Job chapters one and two. You read that on your own time, okay? Go to First John chapter four. Again, brethren, we've got to remember the difference between love and charity. Charity is self-sacrifice. In 1 Corinthians 13, it's supposed to be charity, not love. Because remember, love can be deceitful unto you. Because you can love all the wrong things. You can. But we are commanded to love the Lord our God with all our heart with all our soul, with all our mind. Remember that. 1 John chapter 4, beginning at verse 7. Now, remember the context here. He's talking on to the church of the living God, the body of Christ, okay? That is what he is referring to. And the love he is talking about is not, okay? First John chapter 4, verses 7 on to the close of the chapter. Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God. And everyone that loveth is born of God and knoweth God. He that loveth not knoweth not God, for God is love. Think of the enemies of our Lord Jesus Christ, who make video of attack and attack and attack and attack and attack. Is that true love? Is that the love of God in them? See, they're only fooling those who love themselves. Those who want to be deceived. 
those who want to cling on to this false belief that they're a good person still. Let's continue. In this was manifest, it manifested the love of God toward us, the us, Church of the Living God. Because that God sent his only begotten Son into the world that we might live through him, through him who lives within us. Herein is love, not that we loved God, no, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the propitiation for our sins. Here's our reasonable service. Beloved, if God so loved us, we ought also to love one another. Go, hold your place here. Okay, hold your place here. Go to Romans chapter 5. Romans chapter 5. I want to show you this. Romans chapter 5. Come on, fingers work with. Romans chapter 5, verses 1 on to verse 11. Therefore, being justified by faith. Who is justified by faith? By grace through faith, we who are saved. We have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ by whom also we have access by faith into this grace, wherein we stand and rejoice in the hope of the glory of God, the blessed hope, the redemption of the purchased possession, catching away. And not only so, but we glory in tribulations also, knowing that tribulation worketh patience. Because in tribulations, you want to cut corners sometimes, don't you? You want to get things done to get an end to the tribulation. But sometimes these tribulations are there as a trial to make sure that you're putting your all upon the Lord Jesus Christ. That you're trusting solely on him for every single solitary minuscule thing in your life. And patience, experience, and experience hope. Knowing that you have not seen his seed begging bread. And hope for the relief of the uh, tribulation. And also that hope. The blessed hope. The redemption of the purchased possession seed. And hope maketh not ashamed. Because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost, which is given unto us that seal. You are truly saved, born again, converted of the church of the living God, the ground and pillar of the truth. You are given the Holy Ghost. You are sealed. And who is the Holy Ghost? God the Father. And who is God the Father? Our Lord Jesus Christ. You have the Lord living within you. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I. But Christ liveth within me. And if you have Christ living within you, God is love. You think these enemies are doing what they're doing because they truly love you? I liken their love similar to that of Ammon and Tamar. The love that he had for Tamar. Which when they got it, then it turns to hatred. Showing that it's all of flesh. For when we were yet without strength in due time, Christ died for the ungodly. For scarcely for a righteous man will one die. Yet peradventure for a good man, some would even dare to die. But God commendeth his love toward us 
in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Much more than being justified by his blood, which cleanseth away all sin, we shall be saved from wrath through him, because he has not appointed us to wrath. And the time of Jacob's trouble is his wrath. For if when we were enemies, now he's, remember, he's speaking directly on to the church of the living God. We were reconciled to God by the death of his son, much more being reconciled, now we're reconciled, we shall be saved by his life because he dwells within you. See. And not only so, but we also joy in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom we have now received the atonement, the blood of God that cleanseth away all our sins. See, these fake fakes and these devils who can play a good game, who can talk a good game, and smooth you over with uh, love, okay? They haven't been broken of themselves. They may, in fact, know, some of them, that, yeah, they are a sinner. Yes. But, they, but you can do better, right? Right? You can take it upon yourself, right? Yeah, take it upon yourself by your belief. And not going to him alone for his mercy, his grace. See, that's the web they weave, beloved. Go back to 1 John chapter 4, verse 12. On to the close of the chapter. No man has seen God at any time. We have not seen God at any time with our fleshly eyes. If we love one another, God dwelleth in us, and his love is perfected in us. Hereby know we that we, have, that we dwell in him, and he in us, because he hath given us of his spirit. The Holy Ghost, the seal unto the day of redemption. What? Hold your place here. With, okay. Uh, one of my more, uh, one of my favorite verses of all of Scripture. Galatians chapter two, verse twenty. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. I do not frustrate the grace of God, for by grace are you saved through faith. For if righteousness come by the law, flesh, then Christ is dead in vain. Go back to 1 John. Chapter 4, verse 14. And we have seen and do testify that the Father sent the Son to be the Savior of the world. Whosoever shall confess that Jesus is the Son of God, God dwelleth in him, and he in God. Now, you might be, now, see, this plays again to those who, can, who confess all this stuff, who merely say it, which proves nothing. Which proves nothing. Someone who truly has the Lord Jesus Christ living within them are the only ones who can truly confess it. Because many devils out there can simply rattle off out of a monotone thing as if they have been trained to do so. Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. Devils can say that. But see, it's from here, not here. Because if they truly loved the Lord, it begins here in the heart, not here. See, see the difference? Let's continue. Verse 16, And we have known 
and believe that the love that God hath to us, God is love. And he that dwelleth in love dwelleth in God and God in him. Herein is our love made perfect, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment, because as he is, so are we in this world. What does that mean? Separate. Loving one another of the church of the living God. Sacrificing self for the betterment of others and also for your neighbors. Also for your neighbors. You know, witnessing and testifying by the way you live daily. Not just when all eyes are on you. Verse 18. There is no fear in love. Now, people will say, will come to this and say, see, that means we're not supposed to fear the Lord today. But perfect love casteth out fear, because fear hath torment. He that feareth is not made perfect in love. That love right here, this fear, is not the fear of the Lord. No. Knowing, therefore, the terror of the Lord, we persuade men by, uh, on some have compassion, and others save with fear. The fear that is being referenced there is not the fear of the Lord. It's the fear of the world. The fear of man that bringeth a snare. Not the fear of the Lord. Beware of that, brethren. Beware of that. Because when you come to the Lord on his terms, knowing what he did for you because of what you did to him, that's your fault. You will love him and fear him. You cannot love the Lord unless you fear him. Because if you don't fear him, what would predicate your love? It's what, some sappy kind of thing? No. no. Let's continue. We love him because he first loved us. Yes. If any man say, I love God, and hateth his brother of the church of the living God, he is a liar. For he that loveth not his brother whom he hath seen, how can he love God whom he hath not seen? And this commandment have we from him, that he who loveth God love his brother. Also, his brother, those who are saved, born again and converted of the church of the living God. I might not like you. You might not like me. I might disagree with you and you might disagree with me. But at the end of the day, you are my brother. You are my sister. And as Christ died for us, we are to die for one another. Go to Luke chapter 7. Go to Luke chapter 7. See, you're going to go to hell unless the Lord saves you. Hell was made for the devil and his angels. Okay? You don't have to go to hell. The Lord has provided a way out of hell for you. Okay? Okay? He has. You have to come to him on his terms. Broken of your self-righteousness. 
And once you are, see, he'll, he'll scare the hell out of you, for one. And then you'll be broken by that fear. He'll lead you and guide you. Then you'll be made aware of just how wretched you truly are. And see, without that fear and brokenness, you understanding truly in the heart of how worthless you are. Hello, hi. Hi, I can say that because I know that of myself. He showed it to me. See, unless you have that, how are you going to love the Lord? Other than a mental thing, right? See? See, the fake, their love is all up here. Has nothing to do with here. Nothing. Nothing. Because they're doing it themselves, see? And unless someone is broken of themselves... How are you ever going to love the one who died for you? See? See how that works? Go to Luke chapter 7. Luke chapter 7. Ha. Hey, brother. Luke chapter 7, verses 36 on to the close of the chapter. Can you handle this? And one of the Pharisees desired him that he would eat with him. Pharisee, modern Catholic. Catholic. Tradition, scripture. And he went into the Pharisee's house and sat down to meet. And behold, a woman in the city, which was a sinner, when she knew that Jesus sat at meat in the Pharisee's house, brought an alabaster box of ointment, and stood at his feet behind him, weeping. Behind him. Not in front. Behind him. And began to wash his feet with tears, and did wipe them with the hairs of her head, and kissed his feet, and anointed them with the ointment. Now when the Pharisee, which had bidden him, saw it, he spake within himself, saying, <clears throat> this man, if he were a prophet, a prophet, not God manifest in the flesh, not the Father, no, a prophet. You see, the Pharisee, you see, hold, 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 before we continue, look at that. This man, if he were a prophet, that's as far as they go. They might go farther to say, one of three divine persons. But one God, spirit, soul, and body? Don't, don't miss that. Okay, let's continue. If this man, this man, if he were a prophet, would have known who and what manner of woman this is that toucheth him, for she is a sinner. And Jesus answering, said unto him, just now picture this, the father who knows everybody's thoughts gets, you know, looks, you know, does one of these. Shimon, I have somewhat to say unto thee. And he saith, Master, say on. You see that? See that contradiction right there of this guy, this Pharisee, who, who says if he were a prophet, and yet he calls him master? Yeah. Yeah. It's not here. It's here. See? Let's continue. There was a certain creditor which had two debtors. The one owed 500 pence and the other 50. Uh, very quickly, which one is more? And when they had nothing to pay, he frankly forgave them both. Tell me, therefore, which of them will love him most? See, someone who 
avoids that nasty brokenness and contrition and just goes straight here. Oh, yeah, I owe him 50 pence. Whereas those who come to the Lord on his terms, broken and contrite, I owe him 500 pence. There's no way I can pay that back. I can't. No way. We're going to let the scripture put this right between your eyes. Let's continue. And look, now Shimon here gives the right response. Shimon answered and said, I suppose, I suppose, he knew what he had to say. He knew what he had to say, but it wasn't coming from here. I suppose that he, to whom he forgave most, and he said unto him, Thou hast judged rightly. Oh, excuse me. Thou hast rightly judged. Take your pardon. And he turned to the woman and said unto Shimon, Picture this. Shimon's here. Seest thou this woman? Seest thou, seest thou this woman? I entered into thine house. Thou gavest me no water for my feet. Look at verse 39. This man, if he were a prophet, would have known who and what manner of man, what, what manner of woman, excuse me, this is, that toucheth him. See, he didn't get it. But then in verse 40, he calls him master. And then in the verse 43, I suppose. It's here, not here. Let's continue. But she hath washed my feet with tears and wiped them with the hairs of her head. Thou gavest me no kiss, but this woman, since the time I came in, hath not ceased to kiss my feet. My head with oil, thou didst not anoint, but this woman hath anointed my feet with ointment. Wherefore I say unto thee, her sins, which are many, are forgiven. For she loved much. Are you looking at that, buddy? But to whom little is forgiven, the same loveth little. And he said unto her, Thy sins are forgiven. And look at the response now. And they that sat at meat with him began to say within themselves, Who is this that forgiveth sins also? And he said unto the woman, Thy faith has saved thee. Go in peace. Uh, now, about verse 50. Had he died, buried, and rose again the third day according to the scriptures yet? Had he shed his blood to make atonement for our sins yet? Was he not king of the Jews, offering the kingdom of heaven unto the Jews? That faith is in her king? As king under the law? Yeah. I had to address that. Now go to Luke 18. Luke chapter 18. Now, we saw about that Pharisee and that lowly woman who loved much because she knew what she was and went to the only one who could forgive her. The same who loveth much, uh, who who uh, to whom much is forgiven loveth much, but he who loveth little, okay, 
okay? Instead of butchering that, let's re refresh our memories with that very quickly. Go back to Luke chapter 7, verse, uh, okay? Luke chapter 7, verse 47. Wherefore I say unto thee, her sins, which are many, are forgiven, for she loved much. But to whom little is forgiven, the same loveth little. Luke chapter 18, verses 9 on to verse 14. And he spake this parable unto certain which trusted in themselves that they were righteous and despised others. Two men went up into the temple to pray, the one a Pharisee and the other a publican. The Pharisee stood and prayed thus with himself, God, I thank thee that I am not as other men are, extortioners, unjust, adulterers, or even as this publican. I fast twice in the week. I give tithes of all that I possess. You ever run into somebody who is a Christian Talks like that. You know, we as the Church of the Living God, we can also talk like that. Praise the Lord for a brother who will rebuke you or a sister who will rebuke you. Uh, is, is that not being kind of proud? Forgive me. Yes. But note that. I fast twice in the week. I give tithes of all that I possess. And the publican standing afar off would not lift up, would not lift up so much as his eyes onto heaven. Oh, kind of like being behind Jesus as that woman. Smote upon his breast, saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. I tell you, this man went down to his house justified rather than the other. For every one that exalteth himself shall be abased. And he that humbleth himself shall be exalted. See, if you haven't been broken of your self-righteousness, it's still there, okay? Now, after the Lord saves you, yes, Yes, but see, you come to him on his terms, knowing how rotten you are, no matter what it is. And then once that, you know, the fear of that, that you're going to hell because of your rottenness, okay? Once you get that, he'll guide you into the scriptures, okay? He'll make it aware. I died for that. He'll... I'll, I died for that because of how lowly and how disgusting you are. He will guide you. Okay? He will guide you onto himself through one of his church, the church of the living God, his body. Or maybe you might be searching the scriptures yourself as a lost person, spirit, soul, and body. Seeking, truly seeking. what he did for me. And see, once you realize that it was you who put him there and he died and shed his blood to cleanse you of that, the love that... See, I, see, it can't be described to those of you who don't have that because you don't have the slightest idea of what I'm talking about. Oh, my good friend, let him tell you about the love that he has for his Lord, our Lord Jesus Christ. A brother in Canada who survives every day. Let him tell you about the love that he has for his Lord, our Lord Jesus Christ. Let me tell you about 
my Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, who saved me from hell, who did everything for me because of what I had done unto him. And you lost, you coadjutors, you don't have that. You can never understand it. You could read it a million times, you'll never get it. You'll never get it. Unless you come to him on his terms. Because we've got to remember, brethren, go to 2 Timothy. Go to 2 Timothy. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 1 under verse 9. Remember, thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart. Starts there. With all thy soul and with all thy mind. You, you merely believe your heart has not been dealt with. Your heart has not been dealt with. And it is, it's satanic for those to say, well, God knows my heart. Yeah, he does know your heart. That's why he breaks it. That's why it needs to be broken before he can fix you. You see, you lost. You don't get that. Let me get my wife in here. Okay? That won't happen, but I'm just saying. Have her tell you how the Lord broke her heart. Her heart. How the Lord broke my heart. How the Lord broke every single one of the church of the living God's heart. Which led on to contrition, godly sorrow. But see, it starts here. This, uh, 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 1 under verse 9. This know also that in the last days, perilous times shall come. For men shall be lovers of their own selves. Covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, love thy neighbor as thyself, truce breakers, false accusers, <laughs> incontinent they can't hold water <laughs> fierce despisers of those that are good traitors heady high minded lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God Having a form of godliness, like a visage of godliness, a form of godliness, like the spiritual exercises. But denying the power thereof, from such, turn away, the power thereof. It was the Lord who delivered me from sodomy. It was the Lord who delivered me from alcoholism. It, was the, it is the Lord who has delivered me from a lying tongue. From a heart full of evil. It is the Lord who delivered me from hell. worthy to go there.
loved much, but to whom little is forgiven, the same loveth little. For of this sort are they which creep into houses and lead captive silly women laden with sins, led away with divers lusts, ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Ever learning, but never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Now as Janais and Jambres withstood Moses, so do these also resist the truth, men of corrupt minds, reprobate concerning the faith. But they shall proceed no further, for their folly shall be manifest unto all men, as theirs also was. If your heart is truly broken and belongs to the Lord, that will lead you, He will lead you, to show that love unto others. Go to Matthew chapter 23 now. Matthew chapter 23, verses 1 under verse 15. Okay? Matthew chapter 23, verses 1 under verse 15. Now, the thing about Matthew chapter 23, we got to remember... This is before the death, burial, and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. Matthew chapter 23 is before Matthew chapter 24. And Matthew chapter 24 is talking about the time of Jacob's trouble. So, for our instruction in righteousness, Matthew chapter 23 is kind of making reference onto the time leading up to that. Then spake Jesus to the multitude, and to his disciples, saying, the scribes, those who write, uh, you know, like all these Bibles, and the Pharisees, tradition, scripture, sit in Moses' seat. All therefore whatsoever they bid you observe, that observe and do. But do not ye after their works, for they say and do not. For they bind heavy burdens and grievous to be borne and lay them on men's shoulders. But they themselves will not move them with one of their fingers. Keep in mind like the Jesuits, the Jesuit order. Verse five, but all their works they do for to be seen of men. They make broad their phylactic trees and enlarge the borders of their garments, an outer shoe, having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. And love the uppermost rooms at feasts and the chief seats in the synagogues and greetings in the markets and to be called of men and to be called of men, Rabbi, Rabbi. How can ye believe those of you that seek honor one from another and seeketh not the honor that cometh from God only? Do you receive honor from men? But be not ye called rabbi. What does rabbi mean? For one is your master, even Christ, and all ye are brethren. Who is he talking to? He's talking to the Jews. Remember, this is instruction in righteousness. Let's continue. And call no man your father, lowercase f, upon the earth. For one is your capital F, Father, which is in heaven. That's talking about a title. Father Baker. 
father so-and-so. You can call your daddy father. It's talking about a religious title. Okay, let's continue. Neither be ye called masters, for one is your master. Note the case difference, lower case M, upper case M. For one is your master, even Christ. But he that is greatest among you shall be your servant. Oh, excuse me, beg your pardon. Let's continue. And whosoever shall exalt himself shall be abased. And he that shall humble himself shall be exalted. By serving others. Humble yourself by serving others. At the cost to you. But woe unto you scribes. Right. And Pharisees, tradition, scripture, hypocrites. For ye shut up the kingdom of heaven against men. Now that's talking about the literal kingdom of heaven that's in Jerusalem. But for our instruction in righteousness. These coadjutors and devils, they ain't going to heaven. Of course, obviously they ain't saved. So they're shutting it up against those of you who are seeking, who get led away with their error. For ye neither go in yourselves, neither suffer ye the, them that are entering to go in, that are entering to go in. Meaning they're seeking. There are those of you out there who are seeking. And because of uh, some little stupid little petty thing of yours, you're going to be diverted from truth and go and follow them. Who they themselves are not saved. Woe unto you scribes, those who write the law, those, you know, the Bibles, and Pharisees, tradition, scripture, hypocrites, for ye devour widows' houses, and you research anything of the Jesuit order. They go after widows, women who had a husband. That's what a widow is. Okay? In the Sacrita Monita, they have a whole part about how they are to go after widows. Okay? Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for ye devour widows' houses, and for a pretense make long prayers. Therefore ye shall receive the greater damnation. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for ye can pass sea and land to make one proselyte. Now hold on. I always look at it as so long as I personally can reach or the Lord reaches one person through anything that I, a sinner who is chief, am led to do, yay. They have the same kind of thing. They will go to all ends to make one, what is this? And when he is made, ye make him twofold more the child of hell than yourselves. These coadjutors and devils, they go all over. They are very busy. They, unfortunately, are far more busier than most of the Church of the Living God seem to be. Shame. Shame to you, if that be the case. You are the Church of the Living God. These devils are active. They are very active. They are very busy. They have their tentacles all over. And what are you doing? There are those of you that are doing things or being led of the Lord in whatever capacity it is that you are in. But there are those of you who are drawing back, just sitting, waiting. And remember what we started out with about the Titanic? 
Yes, it's going down. Are you feeding those fires so that light remains until the very last second? You know what I'm saying? Now go to Ephesians chapter 2. Ephesians chapter 2. We looked at those because the one does something out of their own flesh, not broken in heart, whose heart is not right with the Lord. The other, whose sins are many, which are forgiven, loveth much. But he, but that, uh, what is it? Um, to whom is for little forgiven, the same loveth little. See, sorry for botching that. When you get the enormity of your sin and understand what it cost, that does something to you. And those who just merely come and believe and do nothing but attack. It's not out of love. It's not out of love. Sure, okay, yeah. Self-love. Glorify themselves. Because they will be like the Most High. See. Ephesians chapter 2. And see, when you, the Lord saves you, see, and this is another thing. The works of the law can't save us. There is no work that we can do to save ourselves. Okay? Prayer is not a work. Okay? Turning from your self-righteousness is not a work. Okay? Crying out to the Lord in brokenness and godly sorrow is not a work. Those are his requirements. And see, people protest that because they're saving themselves. But see, once the Lord saves you, Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8, on to verse 10. On to verse 10. For by grace are ye saved through faith. And that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God not of works. The works that are being referenced are, he's referring to the works of the law. Okay? The works of the law. Lest any man should boast. I fast two times in the week. I give tithes of all. For we who are saved, born again, converted, for we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus onto good works, on to good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. Not to save ourselves, not to be saved or stay saved. Go to 1 Peter, chapter 2. 1 Peter, chapter 2. 1 Peter, chapter 2, verses 9, under verse 12. We're going to be in uh, second, uh, 1 Peter, chapter 2, two times here. <laughs> but you'll see. 1 Peter, chapter 2, verses 9. Uh, I lost my place. Under verse 12. But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, an holy nation, a peculiar people, that ye should shew forth the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness into his marvelous light, which in time past were not a people, but are now the people of God, which had, had, which had not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. Dearly beloved, I beseech you as strangers and pilgrims, 
abstain from fleshly lusts which war against the soul, having your conversation honest among the Gentiles, that whereas they speak against you as evildoers, they may by your good works, which they shall behold, glorify God in the day of visitation. Love your neighbor as yourself. How you hold yourself, how you behave, how you react in any given situation out there, in your house, among your neighbors, is giving a witness and a testimony. See, remember, brother, not every testimony of our Lord Jesus Christ has to be with you saying something. Giving a tract, how you react when someone smacks stuff out of your hands, when they spit at you, how they attack you. See, the devils will do that when the Lord, you know, shows them, when the Lord uh, reveals who they really are as devils. They'll play back in a feigned humility. But then again, they wait a while and then they come out again doing the same thing. We can give testimony on how we encounter every situation that the Lord puts before us. Remember, Satan has to get permission to attack you, Church of the Living God. If you not give up, put a hedge around him, remove that and he'll curse you to your face. Oh, you're taking everything away? Skin for skin, yay. All that a man hath will he give for his life, but touch his bones and his flesh, he'll curse you to your face. The accuser of the brethren, Go to 2 Corinthians chapter 5. 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Okay? 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Why are, you, why are you sticking together? 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Remember, your sins are many, and they are forgiven. Therefore you love much. But to he, but to who little is forgiven, the same loveth little. See, and remember verse 17 in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Verses 20 on to verse 21. Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ, as though God did beseech you by us. We pray you in Christ's stead, be ye reconciled to God. For he hath made him to be sin for us, who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Not through him, not by him. In him. In him. And verse 21. Lost people who save themselves by their belief. You can never, ever have any comprehension whatsoever of verse 21. All their Jesuit scholars can go and philosophize what verse 21 means. You're truly saved and born again and converted of the Church of the Living God. You get it. You get it. Now go to Romans chapter 12. Okay, now remember... We are called onto good works after we are saved. Not to save ourselves. But see, we're ambassadors. And the situations that the Lord allows us to be in is an opportunity. Let us remember Romans chapter 12, verses 1 and 2. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, 
by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, separate, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Who are you proving this to? Yourself? Um, is Christ in you? Unless you're reprobate? Not saved? No. Who are you proving it to? Go to Luke chapter 6. Luke chapter 6. Luke chapter 6. Verses 27 on to verse 38. Luke chapter 6. Verses 27 on to verse 28. But I say unto you, but I say unto you, uh, but I say unto you which hear, excuse me, love your enemies, do good to them which hate you. How do you love your enemies? By witnessing unto them. Through the scriptures. And how do you do that? By al aligning your life to the scriptures so that they may behold your reactions, the way you speak, the Lord gives you the opportunity of your enemies to open the scriptures. You love your enemies by speaking the truth through the scriptures. By, your, by the words or how you align your life according to the scriptures. That your life resemble the scriptures, see. Bless them that curse you and pray for them which despitefully use you. How do you bless those that curse you? By your witness, by testimony, by speaking the word of God. That's a blessing. Is, is not this, the scriptures, the word of God, the authorized version, a blessing? By telling someone the truth of scripture, is that not a blessing? Even you devils have to, to maintain your facade, even you have to agree to that. To maintain your facade. Yes. And unto him that smiteth thee on the one cheek, offer also the other. And him that taketh Away thy cloak, forbid not to take thy coat also. Give to every man that asketh of thee. And of him that taketh away thy goods, ask them not again. And we have to remember, this is for our instruction in righteousness. This is not giving way to depraved indifference. What is that? Not defending yourself. Not defending your wife. No, no. This is for our instruction in righteousness. And also you have to remember, this is before the death, burial, and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, okay? Under the law, while offering the kingdom of heaven unto the Jews. You have to remember that. This is our instruction in righteousness. How you react out there that's why we're not to be conformed to this world. Not to react as the devil wants to egg us on to his ministers for us to act. Give to every man that asketh of thee, and of him that taketh away thy goods, ask them not again. And as ye would that men should do to you, do ye also, do ye also to them likewise. Do unto others as you would have them to do unto you. The golden rule, as they say. Uh, actually, uh, the golden rule to the world is he who has the gold makes the rules, like the Catholics. 
For if ye love them which love you, what thank have ye? For sinners also love those that love them. And if ye do good to them which do good to you, what thank have ye? For sinners also do even the same. And if ye lend to them of whom ye hope to receive, what thank have ye? For sinners also lend to sinners to receive as much again. But love ye your enemies. Now remember, dispensationally, doctrinally, before the death, burial, and resurrection, in the premise, context of the king, our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, being upon the earth, ruling and reigning from Jerusalem. But our instruction in righteousness, love your enemy. How? Giving them the truth through the scripture, through your testimony, through your witness. And do good and lend, hoping for nothing again. And your reward shall be great. And ye shall be the children of the highest. For he is kind unto the unthankful and to the evil. Get a load of that. Every single one of you lost people. Every single one of you devils. <sighs> you have a chance today to repent of yourself. To allow the Lord to break you of your self-righteousness. That you might actually have godly sorrow. And come to him broken. And have total faith on him for what he did for you. Because of what you did unto him. And I'm telling you. When you are broken and contrite. You're going to call on the name of the Lord. You're going to cry out for mercy. And see, those of you who are lost, you don't understand that because you have never been broken. Okay? You don't understand that. Okay? But he has given you today. What are you going to do with today? Be ye therefore merciful. As your father also is merciful. To you devils out there. Those who hate my guts. The Lord has allowed you today. What are you going to do? You're going to attack him. I hope not. I, You know when I think about those who hate me. Who are my deadliest enemies. What would happen if they truly got saved? Oh. Oh, the talents that they are using for their father, the devil. Oh, oh, just, a, oh, wow. Wow. Wishful thinking. But wow. Wow. Some of you, my enemies out there, wow, man. The Lord actually, if you, you know, allow the Lord to break you of yourself and you could actually feel godly sorrow for what you did to the Lord. And then you you get it. Oh. Oh. Imagine what testimony that could be. Imagine. The what if. <coughs> the what if. I still like to think that every once in a while. <coughs> Judge not, and ye shall not be judged. Condemn not, and ye shall not be condemned. Forgive, and ye shall be forgiven. Now that is the dispensational difference, okay? Right there. Today, in this dispensation, our salvation is not based upon us forgiving other people. It will be during the kingdom of heaven, because the kingdom of heaven is all works. In the kingdom of heaven, if you don't forgive someone, you're not going to be forgiven. Hence, what you do, okay? Uh, today, you can be of the church of the living God and still have a grudge and not forgive someone. Your life and your testimony, your fruit is going to stink. But yeah, that's not going to affect your salvation, okay? That's the dispensational difference. We are to judge according to the perfect standard, okay? If I were an active sodomite, 
I couldn't go up to someone and say, don't be a sodomite. Okay? That's hypocritical judgment. Okay? That's what's being addressed. Okay? Judge not. Okay? Hypocritical judgment. That Paul also addressed that in Romans chapter 2. Okay? Okay? He's talking about hypocritical judgment. But remember, during the kingdom of heaven, okay, the thousand year reign of our Lord Jesus Christ on earth, it's works, okay? Because it says right there, if you don't forgive, you're not going to be forgiven. Okay? Get it? Dispensational difference. Let's continue. Give, and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down. And shaken together, running over, shall men give into your bosom. For with the same, and here, right here, for with the same measure that ye meet, with all it shall be measured to you again. Not of necessity. For God loveth a cheerful giver. Do unto others as you would have them to do unto you. And go to Luke chapter 14. Luke chapter 14. See, good works come from a broken and contrite heart from one that is of the church of the living God, saved, born again, converted. And those good works were ordained for us to walk in them to be a testimony unto the lost. Not to save us. Not to stay saved. But as ambassadors to walk as Paul gave us the example to walk. Okay? Luke chapter 14, verses 7 on to verse 14. And he put forth a parable to those that were bidden when he marked how they chose out the chief room, saying unto them, When thou art bidden of any man to a wedding, sit not down in the highest room, lest a more honorable man than thou be bidden of himself. Uh, don't think more highly of yourself than you ought. And he that bade thee, and he that bade thee, and him come and say to thee, Give this man place, and thou being with shame to take the lowest room. But when thou art bidden, go and sit down in the lowest room, that when he that, may, that bade thee cometh, he may say unto thee, Friend, go up higher. Then shalt thou have worship in the presence of them that sit at meat with thee. For whosoever exalteth himself shall be abased, and he that humbleth himself shall be exalted. Then said he also to him that bade him, When thou makest a dinner or a supper, call not thy friends, nor thy brethren, neither thy kinsmen, nor thy rich neighbors, lest they also bid thee again, and a recompense be made thee. But when thou makest a feast, Call thy the poor, the maimed, the lame, the blind, and thou shalt be blessed, for they cannot recompense thee. With an S. For thou shalt be recompensed at the resurrection of the just. Also with an S. Okay? Okay? Now, go to Romans chapter 15. Romans chapter 15. We're almost done. Okay. Romans chapter 15. Romans chapter 15. The heart. The heart. It's an issue of the heart. Has your heart been broken? Has your heart been broken because you know of what a scoundrel you are? And that God so loved and gave, past tense. When you get that and the Lord saves you because you come to him broken and contrite, you come to him broken and contrite, you're going to call on him. You're going to scream out, Lord have mercy upon me, a sinner. It just happens. It just happens. 
Romans 15, verses 1 under verse 7. We then that are strong ought to bear the infirmities of the weak, and not to please ourselves. Let every one of us please his neighbor for his good to edification by aligning our lives to the scriptures that we live according to the scriptures. And this, like, brethren, we are in the last days. The redemption of the purchased possession is coming swoop sometime. <laughs> How are we adhering our lives to the scriptures to leave a testimony unto those that are going to be left behind? For even Christ pleased not himself. But as it is written, the reproaches of them that reproached thee fell on me. For whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning. Referring unto the Old Testament. You are to be in the Old Testament, brother, sister, and not discard it. For our instruction in righteousness. So you can learn, okay? That we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. Now the God of patience and consolation grant you to be like-minded one toward another according to Christ Jesus, that ye may with one mind and one mouth Glorify God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Wherefore, receive ye one another, as Christ also received us to the glory of God, to the glory of God. Condescend the men of low estate. Low estate. Don't think more highly of yourself than you ought. We go back now to 1 Peter chapter 2. See how we did that? 1 Peter chapter 2. 1 Peter chapter 2, not 2 Peter, Brad. Verses 16 unto the close of the chapter. Okay? Now, hold on. Hold, uh, go, hold your place there if you're at 1 Peter chapter 2. Okay, go back to Romans chapter 15. Let's read that last verse again. Uh, verse 7. Whereas receive ye one another, Romans 15, verse 7 again. Wherefore receive ye one another, as Christ also received us to the glory of God. 1 Peter chapter 2, beginning at verse 16. As free. If the Son shall make you free, ye shall be free indeed. To be a servant. Servant has a choice. Slave doesn't. As free. And not using your liberty as a cloak of maliciousness, but as the servants of God. Honor all men, love the brotherhood, fear God, honor the king. Servants, be subject to your masters with all fear, not only to the good and gentle, but also to the froward. For this is thankworthy, if a man for conscience toward God and your grief suffering wrongfully. For what glory is it if when ye be buffeted for your faults, ye shall take it patiently? But if when ye do well and suffer for it, ye take it patiently, this is acceptable with God. For even hereunto were ye called, because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example that ye should follow his steps, who did no sin, now, we can't do that because Jesus Christ is God the Father. He could not sin. We sin, okay? But who did no sin, neither was guile found in his mouth. Who, when he rev was reviled, reviled not again, not getting even, fighting fire with fire, which I have done and I, to my shame, okay? When he suffered, he threatened not but committed himself to him that judgeth righteously. Vengeance is mine. I will repay, saith the Lord. Okay? Who his own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree, 
that we being dead to sins should live unto righteousness by whose stripes ye were healed. For ye were as sheep going astray, but are now returned to the shepherd and bishop of your souls. Now go to 1 Corinthians chapter 10. 1 Corinthians chapter 10. Okay. Knowing that, 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 24. Let no man seek his own, but every man another as well. What's the contrast to that? Go to Philippians chapter 2. Philippians chapter 2, verse 21. Philippians chapter 2, verse 21. For all seek their own, not the things which are Christ's. Christ. Uh, for, all th for all seek their own, not the things which are Jesus Christ's. All seek their own. Lovers of their own selves. While in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 24, let no man seek his own, but every man another's wealth. Suffering for the sake of others. While most people, especially these Christians, okay, for all seek their own, not the things which are Jesus Christ's. These fakes, these coadjutor, infiltrator devils, they love themselves. They, they serve their father, Satan. They serve their flesh. Wow. Those of the church of the living God, verse 24 and 1 Corinthians chapter 10, let no man seek his own, but every man another's wealth. Okay? Drop down in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 31 under verse 33. Now we have to remember something about this, okay? The context here is about eating meat sacrificed onto idols, asking no question for conscience sake, okay? It also here in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, for example, okay? You go to a Jew's house, you know that we can eat pork today because that, that was um, in a different dispensation you can eat pork today because it is sanctified by prayer, giving of thanks, okay? You go to a Jew's house who is keeping kosher, you as the church of the living God, how are you showing love unto that Jewish man by devouring pork in his presence? Okay? Okay? You don't use your liberty as a means to rub it into people's face. That's the context, okay? But verse 31 under verse 33. Whether therefore ye eat or drink or whatsoever ye do, do all to the glory of God. Give none offense, neither to the Jews nor to the Gentiles, nor to the church of God. You live according to the scriptures. It's going to offend the lost. It's going to offend these wicked devils. You live according to the scriptures. They are going to get offended. What this is talking about is not using your liberty as a crutch, as a crutch, you know. Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? It's, that's what he's referring to, okay? 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 Verse 33. Even as I please all men in all things, not seeking mine own profit, but the profit of many that they may be saved. That doesn't mean walking contrary to the scriptures. That doesn't mean that you become like the world to win the world. No, no, no. It means don't abuse your liberty that the Lord has given you to serve others, okay? Go to 2 Corinthians chapter 12. 2 Corinthians chapter 12. Not Galatians. 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 14 on to verse 15. Behold, the third time I am ready to come to you, and I will not be burdensome to you, for I seek not yours, but you. For the children ought not to lay up for the parents, but the parents for the children. And here it is. Here it is. 
Church of the Living God. Have you forgotten this? I will very gladly spend and be spent for you. Though the more abundantly I love you, the less I be loved. The more abundantly I love you, the less I be loved. There are many ways that you can give unto others. A lot of people like to immediately acquaint it with stuff that you hold in your hands. Give your time to people. Pray. Pray. Pray for people. Pray for people. Oh, our Lord's goodness, man. Praying. Remember, prayer can move a mountain, whatever that mountain might be. Do you pray for others? The church of the living God? Do you pray for the lost? Do you pray that someone who is purposely allowing themselves to be led astray to be broken, that they might be saved? Because again, some of these devils, what happened? What would happen if one of them actually got saved? If the Lord actually saved them? Wow. Wow. See, they are using their, what they got, to further for their father, Satan. Similar, you know, think of it like this, how the Lord got a hold of Paul, of Saul, who was a murderer, and turned him into Paul, that he may be a messenger. Think of that testimony. And the redemption of the purchased possession is coming sometime. <laughs> but when, I don't know. We don't know. But how you live in accordance with this, the scriptures, especially now, not conforming. Because like I said, my wife and I, were out there. We're doing our, you know, we're doing what the Lord would have us to do. But like I said, brethren, like I said, the testimony of how you react to certain situations that you encounter sometimes some of those are going to make a greater impact. Because remember Stephen. They were stoning him. And being stoned, you know, throwing rocks at him, um, Stephen, before he died, knelt down and said, Lord, let not this sin be laid to their charge. And then, bam! That testimony, I can guarantee you, had something to do with a young man named Saul who they laid their jacket, their coats at his feet. That testimony that Saul saw from Stephen, that affected him. I'll bet you. I'll bet you 10 bucks. See? Like I said, you don't have to go out of your way. Brethren, you just do what this says. It's not as hard as you think, you know. Just do what this says. It's going to be it for this video. More videos are coming, Lord willing. Um, 
I am here. Until the Lord says unto your servant that it is enough. All this is from the Lord. And only he will stop it or can allow it to continue. It is in his hands, not mine. You understand? Because again, while the Titanic was sinking, those guys in the boiler room worked until it was, until the ship broke in half. That's what I'm going to do. And that's what you ought to do, Church of the Living God. And what, in whatever capacity it is. Okay? Thank you. We will see you, Lord willing, in the next video. It may not be tomorrow. Um, hope it's up to the Lord. This is up to the Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. Not me. If it was, I'd be doing something else. Every single one of you of the Church of the Living God, I love you. And may the Lord recompense you, lead you, and guide you. And may you have courage and faith and trust on our Lord Jesus Christ to adhere your life unto the Scriptures. It's, it's very necessary in these days, brethren, sisters. Okay? See you in the next video.